space, once the final frontier, could one day become the next battlefield. Through DARPA, the Pentagon's defense research agency, Lockheed Martin, has secured a contract to develop a nuclear-powered spacecraft named Draco. Until now, nuclear power in space has long been in the realm of science fiction due to the cost and risk of contamination. For more, I'm joined by Jagannath Sankara, an assistant professor at the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas in Austin. He is also a non-resident fellow with the Brookings Institution. Professor Space Force Major General David Miller said it's time to stop debating over space weapons and arm ourselves to deter conflict. So what kind of conflict are we talking about that would happen in space? Uh, good evening, John. Thank you for having me. Um, so uh, in that particular uh, uh, statement he made, he is referring to a conflict in which the Chinese or conceivably the Russians would uh, shoot at one of our satellites and then blow it up kinetically. That is what he is referring to. And what presence does the U.S. have at the moment if such a thing were to happen in space? Oh, immense. I mean, in terms of capability, the U.S. would be number one in applying satellites uh, to warfare or uh, satellites to monitor adversary troops. We have more communication satellites, uh, more uh, intelligence collection satellites, the GPS system. So the presence is huge. But that's the presence. That those are things that could be targets. What about to deter this kind of uh, attacking of those uh, those kinds of vehicles? Uh Quite limited, I would say. We have good monitoring satellite systems and ground-based systems that tell us what the Russians and Chinese are doing. But in terms of purely defensive offensive weapons, we have done experiments, right? I mean, we have done them, the Chinese have done them, Russians have done them. But there is no uh, 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 defender satellites as such that could uh, act defensively to prevent an attack. And I think he is also calling for those kind of satellite systems in his talk. Well, that's right. So what would be... In terms of the escalation uh, to put a space force in place, uh, what would that look like? Uh, first, it would be very costly, right? I mean, uh, launching satellites, in spite of reduction in launch cost, is not trivial. And uh, it's very difficult to imagine how one would do it. I mean, the the, uh, the analogy from ground-based uh, defensive system to space is not one-to-one. Uh, uh, -one. Uh, so if we put a satellite in front of our, say, most critical communication satellites, and the Russians hit that, that's going to break up and then go ahead and hit other satellites. So a defensive system by itself itself is not that simple, and he hasn't really outlined what it means. And if we were to do it, then how many defensive satellites per satellite do we do? It gets quite complicated in terms of uh, operational practice. A much useful way to think about this would be to create redundancies. Uh, other alternate systems, proliferated satellite constellations that take away the motivation for Russians or Chinese to try to do something like this. And what governs, if anything, uh, the territory of space? I mean, you know, you, you know what's happening when Russia invades Ukraine, but how, does, how do the limits of space get uh, determined by the world? But so there is no sovereign territory in space, right? It, it's, uh, 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 it's common good. Uh, the, um, we can conceivably tell when the Russians are trying to move closer to an American satellite. And in that capability, my guess is the Americans are much stronger than anybody else. It may still be insufficient, and I would concede that point, but we don't know when they're trying to move. Uh, but the tricky part is there are no laws. There are no treaties. We have an outer space treaty, but that is very dated. It does not stop any of those things that's uh, talked about in that piece. So um, there is a Wild West component to the whole process. Jagannath Sankaran, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, John.